Hi guys and welcome back to another video of me reacting to Eurovision 2022. So in my last video I reviewed UK, Greece and Cyprus already, they've shot right up to my favourites list so some pretty big shoes to fill today so we'll see if today's video is going to be as strong. So let's crack on and do it, what song are we going to do first? Let's start with Ukraine. Oh okay Ukraine. Now last year Ukraine was a tune, it was a very folk sounding song, very like traditional musical elements. We heard Go Away two years in a row and I like grew to really, really like them. It was a different type of music than I'd heard before, I guess. And I really appreciated it because it was something a bit different, but also good. <laughs> so I ended up really, really loving and really, really enjoying um, Go Away in the song contest. Uh, actually, they were um, my parents' favorite song last year. We all ended up getting drunk and having a good old dance to them at the end of the night. <laughs> So yeah, some big shoes to fill, but let's see if they can do it. This year they've got somebody called Kalush Orchestra uh, with a song called Stephania. So by that name, I'm assuming it's going to be an orchestra. Here we go. <laughs> I can't get it in. So it's definitely starting with this kind of very folky kind of singing. In fact, it's giving me shum vibes already the way that he's singing you know <laughs> okay so we've got some rap i kind of like this i quite enjoy the fusion of like gangster rap with some sort of traditional folk pop singing you know i'm not something i would have expected but i'm kind of liking it <laughs> so he's saying dear mother stephania so maybe it's a song about his mommy what the heck is that that is a weird looking recorder thing, maybe? I'm not like understanding if there's like a main singer, but I suppose that's the point. They're, they're all obviously part of the, the band. Everybody has their own part in this. His hat is... Doesn't feel like it's kind of part of the same band. <laughs> I think that the hook is very catchy. <laughs> Okay, so not only we have rat, we've also got a bit of a brant, brant steak. <laughs> a bit of a dance break. The staging is, it feels very busy, but because the outfits are cohesive with the sort of LED wall, I'm kind of not mad at it. Very catchy hook, very catchy little motif there. Very interesting kind of staging. It works, I really, I felt it. I felt the vibe, I felt the hook, the motifs, it was catchy. They were living their best life, the rap, it dancing, like it had everything you want. Some may say it had too much, <laughs> but no, I like that. Yeah, so I do think that they have um, a lot going on in the song, but I really like that there's like, you know, it sounds very Ukrainian, I guess you could say, like the way that they have the, the sort of chanty singing at the beginning. Um, the instrument was a flute, which for me kind of gives me traditional instrument kind of sounds as always what happens whenever somebody's playing some kind of woodwind. It always makes, takes you back, doesn't it? To kind of like a ye old country. I think the song had a lot of really cool qualities and I do think that the hook will really entice you in because I'm sort of like singing it in my head. That being said, I definitely don't see it as the winning song. Um, you know, it's kind of like what I said of Cyprus. It feels like they wrote this song maybe with the same kind of songbook as the two songs prior with Go A. Like it's, it feels like a similar type of vibe, which is fine, you know, but I do like it when a country like experiments doing different things each year. And I don't feel like they, they've brought anything new to the table. I mean, other than the rap, I guess. So in the national selection for Ukraine this year, there was another artist that actually won. It turned out that, that they were disqualified. Kalush Orchestra were then offered to represent the country this year. So for them, that must have been amazing to think, oh, damn it, I missed out. And then, oh, no, no, come back, please. So for them, that must be kind of like really, really incredible. Also, like we can't um, ignore the fact of what's going on in Ukraine right now. So for this band to be able to represent their country during a time where they're going through something so devastating, 
it's probably going to be a huge honor for them. You know, it goes without saying that like, my heart goes out to every one of the victims in Ukraine right now. For the contest, I really hope that the members of the band are all staying safe and they get to perform in Turin. Uh, I mean, it would be amazing if they not only got through to the semi-finals, but got through right to the finals and they were able to perform on the main stage, kind of like a beacon of hope, I guess, for their country right now. So I really wish them all the best and I really hope that they'll stay safe and they'll get there and they'll be able to make that uh, make their country proud. I don't think that it is, uh, it's not my favourite song, and it's, I don't think that it is the best song we've listened to yet. Um, I think it's, is it first in the odds at the moment? Yeah, so it is first in the odds, um, and naturally I wish them all the best, and I hope that they can get through to the finals, but I don't think it is a winning song this year. But, uh, there's actually a lot they can do with the staging though, that could be quite fun. I mean, I said already that the song is very busy, so maybe they can continue building and, and, and refining the staging and maybe just, uh, ditch the pink hat, um, then they could be on to a winner. <laughs> All the best, Kalush Orchestra, and we'll see you in Turin. Okay, so next up we're going to be listening to Serbia. So Serbia have not been in the contest for, like, the longest time, and then when they first actually performed um, as an independent country, they won. That's pretty impressive. So for the last two years we had Hurricane, a band that I really grew to love. In 2020 I was kind of a bit like, okay. But then with Loco Loco, um, ba, 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 I just was like, damn girl. You can sing, you can perform the hat damn boot, mama. <laughs> so I really fell in love with them towards the end of the contest. Um, so yeah, we'll see what Serbia has to offer. This is Hans Konstvakta um, and a song called In Corpore Sano. Okay. Like a Marco. The whole staging and the way she's singing feels very, ooh, very theatrical, isn't it? And like a stage play. To be healthy. I'm quite liking the uh, claps, it's these subtle little elements that give a song its identity. Quite cool. The way she's singing it is quite interesting because it's kind of just like, I don't give a crap, I'm just speaking, I'm just singing, so it's quite enticing. And I'm not sure I completely understand the staging, but that's usually a good sign because it kind of is like, ooh, interest. Yeah, it makes you, makes you think like what's going on. I feel like the way she's singing as well, like her facial expression, she's constantly like... Suspicious. You just know straight away this... This is gonna be one of those songs that's in your head. She looks over it. She's just like, why am I here? But it's also a vibe. <laughs> and like the LED wall behind her has that kind of like health cross. Perhaps this uh, performance was funded by like the Health Association of Serbia or something. <laughs> okay, um, I hate this song because I know it's going to be in my head. Thanks a lot for that. This song didn't have a huge growth. It didn't have a lot of development throughout. It was the type of song where the monotone way that she was singing, like it was the intention of the song. Um, and I totally got that. So I'm not like mad that that was the vibe. It actually was very interesting. And it's these things like, like the way that she was singing, the claps in the chorus, the dance moves, the repeated way that she was singing in the chorus. It makes it stick in your head. It's like, it's like the perfect recipe for an earworm, which as a songwriter is great. And as a listener, it's like, oh great, this is gonna be in my head every day. So this song is definitely not the normal type of song that I would listen to. Um, I can't say it's going to be one of my favorites. Um, naturally, there's been others that I vibe a little bit more with, but that being said, I totally understand where they're going with this. It's kind of like typical Eurovision. You know, you've got a woman on stage singing in a um, interesting type of way. She's washing her hands. I mean, she's one stone throw away from bloody churning butter at this point. Um, and she's talking about being healthy and Meghan Markle's hair and all these topical things. I mean, what could be more Eurovision than this, honestly? So, you know, like I said, even though it's not the type of song that I would normally listen to, 
This is why I like Eurovision. It's bringing something different, something that I wouldn't normally listen to. You know, in the final of Eurovision, we need songs like this, because otherwise it'll be like watching, you know, the final of The X Factor or The Voice or something, or a pop song after pop song after pop song. Like, we need something different. And a lot of the time, that actually bodes well for the country because people get bored of the same thing. So to have something like this that is a bit different, it's like, I see where you're going with these. I definitely see this song qualifying into the finals, um, but I don't think it's going to do particularly well. This type of song is, I guess, the kind of like love it or hate it kind of song, but depending on what they do with the stage and kind of the mood the general public are in on the day really does kind of affect the scoreboard, you know? So it really does depend on the night, I feel like. But good luck, Serbia. Um, I wish you all the best and I'll see you on stage with your Mega Marco hair. So next up, I do read the comments. We're gonna do Albania for those of you that have asked for it. So, Albania, next up. Okay, let's hope that Albania says something great because they haven't, I feel like, shot to the top yet in a while. So we really need them to put themselves back on the map. So this is a song called Secret by <laughs> by Ronella Hajita. Here we go. Now this is the updated version, the revamp I'm gonna listen to. Very, very focused around vocals, very choral. She's like, help me, mister. So there's this kind of motif in the background which makes it sound quite, and the way she's singing, quite kind of like traditional sounding more kind of Eastern Europe kind of vibes, you know? Although I quite like the way she's singing. She's kind of like, she has a really deep voice for female vocals. And she can sing. The melody line's quite simple. Okay. She's got something to say. Come on, bring it. Oh, okay, I see what they're doing. So the chorus is more one of those kind of instrumental kind of uh, structured ones. I was expecting something a little bit different. I feel like it's a little bit of an underwhelming drop to the chorus. <laughs> I love this wig. So far, listening to the song, I feel like the uh, most catchy moment is the pre-chorus. Isn't usually the best sign though, unfortunately. She's got some great vocals, like she can sing. The song's missing something for me, and I know that this is the revamp, so I'm kind of underwhelmed. I mean, the thing is, is like, don't forget with Eurovision, it is a very visual performance-based contest. So I'm watching a video here where I'm like, okay, I'm not feeling the song, but this could totally change with the performance on the stage, you know? And off they go to start their journey. <laughs> So let's start with the positives. I really love that she's singing both in English and in Albanian. I really like it when artists sing in their native language. Musically, there was some really interesting traditional, you know, Eastern European elements. Vocally, she was doing riffs and the way she was singing, which was very evocative of Eastern Europe. Uh, and also in the background, there was some, um, oh, there was like this reeded instrument, this kind of woodwind instrument that was doing a motif in the background, some kind of like um, doing an interesting kind of Eastern scale, um, which was really cool. Also like the whole vibe of the song, the fact that there was these elements and also the fact that it started based on very rich choral vocals. It just sounded very Albanian. This is a type of song construction that we can identify with Albania, which is great because they have this identity. But also, you know, I'm kind of like, they're not um, trying new things or trying anything about outrageous or out there because they've, they've, well, they've sent this type of song quite a few times now in the past. Uh, so it would be nice to see them trying something a bit new. This is obviously just subjective, it's my personal opinion, but I just felt like the song was missing something. It just was missing that heart for me. I feel like the structure of the song, I understand what they were doing by having the chorus as that kind of, uh, you know, focus solely to that instrument break so that it leaves a lot of room for a performance on stage. But, you know, musically listening to it now, I was waiting for something cool to happen with the vocals or set to be a bit of a build and it kind of just fell a bit flat for me. I wanted something a bit more from the chorus and it didn't give me it. Also, I feel like the, the verse as well in the song was, was just missing something. So like I said, the only 
part of the song that I can really like identify and, and remember is the pre-chorus and that's the only bit that I'm liking and I don't know if that uh, says a lot for the song. But that being said, it takes a lot of time for songs to kind of absorb, so it might be that it's a grower. We don't know yet. All the best to Albania. Um, I can't say whether it will qualify or not. Nonetheless, all the best Albania. We'll see you in Turin. So that's all the songs we're going to do in this particular video, you guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. We've had an interesting mix this episode. Out of this particular episode, I'm going to call it. I think Ukraine was up there for me. I really enjoyed that. So let me know in the comments, guys, which one of these three songs is your favourite. And also let me know, actually, let me know a top 10 of the songs so far. I'm interested to hear what you guys are saying is your top. Also, I have some more songs to review. So by hearing your top 10, I will know which ones to review next. So you guys, this is an interactive experience between me and you. <laughs> Don't forget to click the little thumbs up button because that means like. The thumbs down button will end the universe. So don't press it. And don't forget to subscribe. I will see you next time. Bye! <laughs>